Starbase crews work to destroy what they're currently fixing, Falcon 9 reaches its launch goal for the year, Dragon is up to bat, Starlink becomes available to more people who aren't me, and we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. So, last week SpaceX lit a record 14 Raptor engines under Booster 7. Well, since then, the excitement at the launch site subsided slightly, although work around the clock did not. Between the Thanksgiving holiday and the shoddy weather rolling in and out of Boca Chica, Texas, road closures were lacking this week. So crews have been spending their time making fixes to the orbital launch mount created by Booster 7's big old blast, as well as building scaffolding around the base of the rocket's upper half, Starship 24. For reasons not entirely known at the moment, however, it does appear SpaceX is adding reinforcement plating to the hull underneath the heat shield tiles perhaps a lesson they've recently learned from can crushing tests at Massey's. Further work continues up Highway 4 at the shipyard. Multiple tank domes and Starship cones scatter the production site as sections of future vehicles are assembled in the new Star Factory facility. And the next Starship in line, S-25, rests fully assembled in the high bay. Elon says more static fires are coming that could begin as soon as Monday. So keep an eye on Lab Padre's channel for live coverage. On Tuesday, Falcon 9 managed to slip through the nasty weather Florida has also been having, launching UTELSAT 10B, an all-electric satellite to geosynchronous transfer orbit from Slick 40. The nine first-stage Merlin engines even blowing a couple smoke rings during its ascent to space. Smoking's bad. You shouldn't smoke. Okay. This was the 11th flight for this first stage, but also its last. It was just the latest of several recent Falcon 9 boosters to be expended in exchange for extra performance. This mission also marked the 52nd launch of 2022, so far, which was SpaceX's goal for the entire year. The payload for this mission was deployed successfully about 35 minutes after liftoff. SpaceX and NASA also attempted to launch their last resupply mission for the year to the International Space Station on Monday, but weather was not as kind. The mission's now supposed to happen on Saturday at 2.20 p.m. Eastern, but of course it's always subject to change. Multiple delays have plagued this Dragon, from poor weather to a leak in the spacecraft's thermal control system. This is a 100% new rocket, first stage and all, and the capsule is the third and final Cargo Dragon 2 expected to be constructed. There are currently four Crew Dragon capsules in operation, and SpaceX recently announced their plans to build a fifth will most likely also be its final for the version as well. Feels like it's been four weeks since we've seen a Starlink mission take off, probably because that's how long it's actually been. But despite the lack of launches, the flocks of satellites that have been put in orbit over the months continue to reach their final parking spots and join the constellation. SpaceX hath declared Starlink is now available across all of Alaska and Canada, and is operating in two of the most remote areas in the world, two islands thousands of miles away from the nearest continent. Oh, and now serving more Norwegians. Good for you guys. The eastern half of the United States can go coitus themselves. Except the Cape, South Texas, you know, places where SpaceX has offices, and New England for some reason. Before we move on, let me tell you about our sponsor. The Epic Times brings you not just SpaceX or Musk news when it's pertinent, but also breaking US and world news, including stories that other media ignore on all your devices. Also, original Epic TV programs like Crossroads, The Larry Elder Show, Facts Matter, American Thought Leaders, and award-winning documentaries. They're an independent news media that focuses on clear, fact-based journalism without spin or hidden agendas. They trust their discerning readers, that's you, to arrive at your own conclusions. I just read one of their stories about the FBI and Air Force kicking, kicking in some poor nerd's door because he likes to blog about Area 51. Didn't charge the guy with any crimes, just kept his stuff that they confiscated, costing him thousands of dollars. And even though you hear about civil forfeiture happening all the time, it's still crazy to me that we as a, an American society still find this acceptable, apparently. Anyway, found it to be a very interesting story. And the Epic Times has a lot more content ready for you to dive into. So give them a try. I even have a special offer for you here. One dollar for two months. Go to epictim.es slash space eccentric and subscribe. Link below. But now it's time for today's honorable mention. An aerospace component manufacturing firm comprised of an impressive team of experienced engineers and contractors from all over the space industry reached out to me the other week to inform me of what they've been up to. And I find it to be quite fascinating. Gravitix has announced they're raising 20 million to build large next generation space station modules. And they're not just large, they're 100% made in the US of A. The company's StarMax module is currently in development. In fact, they've already begun assembling the first prototype in Seattle and will test it early next year. The real deal will provide up to 400 cubic meters of usable habitable volume. 
That's almost half of what the ISS provides its occupants. The StarMax modules will have self-contained power and propulsion for delivery and docking once in orbit, and are able to ride to space on top of any next-generation rockets, including Starship. Gravitix is taking orders now for delivery in 2026. Well, that's all for this one. Thank you so much for stopping by to see me. Nothing but love for my supporters, keeping this space eccentric machine pumping out these videos. If you guys are on the prowl for some sweet Christmas gift ideas for your loved ones or yourself, if you have nobody you love, check out the links to our stores in the description below and get yourself one of these sweet eccentric polos. My mom makes them. But do have a nominal Thanksgiving weekend. And until our next Friday episode, Godspeed. Godspeed.